Alright YouTube, it's time for the occult video 114 on the idea of the little black books, the Svarteboka in uh, Swedish tradition. Uh, the Galdebarak from Iceland is one, the Petit Albert from France is another, the various books of St. Cyprian, uh, receipt books which date all the way up through the mid-1900s honestly. Um, in American, certainly British tradition, uh, you would have powwows by Holman in the Pennsylvania Dutch slash American tradition, with a little bit of crossover from native lore, apparently. Um, these books are essentially the earlier version of the pre-Wiccan Book of Shadows. That is, within Wiccan tradition, when you think of it, uh, you have the practice of individuals, witches and wizards and so forth, whatever they term themselves within Wicca, I'm not exactly sure. They will hand write down sort of their magical experiments, um, recipes for healing, um, spells, incantations, uh, dream interpretation, sort of things of that nature. And it's sort of codified within these uh, often uh, hand-bound, self-written volumes. These were prevalent throughout the Middle Ages, they were prevalent throughout the Renaissance especially, and they were prevalent in the early pre-modern period through the Enlightenment early industrial era. Unfortunately, of the probably tens of thousands of such handwritten and limited press copies that were ever made, only a fraction are now actually extant. Over time, you would think, for instance. You have a handwritten volume of some occult lore containing spells and charms and talismans and stuff, or, or alchemical lore or anything related to it. And then you have a house fire. Well, bye-bye occult tradition. Potentially a great deal of occult lore has just been lost. And I'm sure that this has happened, unfortunately, many times. Persecution probably robbed us of many of these texts. Uh, it is very odd to me that if you're looking for Renaissance-era folk, traditions especially. You're going to find the largest volume of them as far as what ended up becoming publicly available to this current day. <laughs> You're going to find it from Spain. You know, Inquisition Central, Catholicism Central, uh, under the moniker of the Books of St. Cyprian. Now, there is no single Book of St. Cyprian. There are so many different interpretations, translations, and versions of the same basic content that it boggles the mind. Uh, we're talking about many dozens of copies. In the French tradition, we have specifically the Petit Albert. We have the Grand Grimoire would be an example of a little black book probably as well. Now these volumes um, are spoken of in many cultures, in Scandinavian culture especially, as well as France and Spain. Uh, for instance, with the books of St. Cyprian, supposedly they're bound in black with red trim, uh, it's just sort of a, a trapping that was considered to be what you would look for if you were looking for one of these volumes. Uh, there are tales, for instance, the Necromancer, uh, which I've heard of myself. The Necromancer is supposedly one of these little black books that was authored literally by Satan and is now held in the Vatican archives or something like that in a sort of indestructible antechamber which will self-destruct if anybody uh, attempts to access it and so forth. Uh, I think that that may be a little bit of a cultural overlap of the Codex Gigas, honestly myself, uh, sort of the Devil's Bible, which itself is a little more than a heavily illustrated Bible that happens to contain a lot of diabolical looking <laughs> monographic pictures and so forth. But the little black books do exist. There's also the Red Book of Appen, for example. Now, the Red Book of Appen is not extant. As far as we know, there are no copies of it existing today. If there are, then there might be one or two in some private collection somewhere, maybe a university library buried deep in the archives, and those are the only copies we have. may not even be legible by now, unfortunately. Um, but we do have a second-hand account from contemporary or near-contemporary times that speaks of what its content is. And the content was veterinary medicine, uh, folk healing, and things of that nature. That does not mean that it's not a grimoire. If you look at the Petit Albert, much of the content is, quite literally, veterinary medicine, folk healing, and sort of the blood of a bat, eye of a cat stuff, which nonetheless was a folk tradition in Europe at the time. When we think of that as the diabolical, true occult side, and we, we uh, eschew sort of the poisoned fishing bait sort of stuff that you find in like the Petit Albert, my favorite grimoire, by the way, I think we overlook what the occult meant 
honestly at the time. Not all of it's the hand of glory sort of stuff. Um, the idea of people riding broomsticks around and anointing themselves with witching oil, that's mostly Christianized uh, burning times witch hunt material, actually. And if you look at the actual occultism of those same eras, it's far different from what people like King James were actually looking for. So there are a great many hand-bound volumes, I'm sure, lying in people's basements and attics and behind other books on their bookshelf. If they only searched for them, we'd probably find many hundreds of these across Scandinavia alone. We'd find dozens of them, I'm sure, in France. We'd find lost versions of these St. Cyprian texts in Spain and Portugal. Um, all sorts of occult texts lying around the world. Probably half of the occult works of note that have ever been penned by man have not yet been rediscovered because they were driven underground during the burning times and a large proportion of the rest uh, probably are so rare that we don't have any copies that are publicly available. Look at the, again, look at the Galdebarak. The Galdebarak is a published version of a handwritten text from Scandinavia that until very recently was not publicly available. Somebody just had a copy, it was passed down, it's a receipt book. That's essentially what it is. In the British tradition, it'd be called a, a receipt book. Here in the United States, it would be something different. In France, it would be a grimoire. In the Scandinavian tradition, it's a svarteboka. Uh, in Iceland, it's, you know, I, I don't know what term. I, I can't pronounce Icelandic anyway, so I'm not going to bother trying. But they must have a slightly different from Swedish term, let's face it. And so we look around the world. Literary history is extremely important. It's of great interest to me. I have, for instance, a scan uh, of a handwritten Scottish herbal. I would love nothing better than to release this as an addition so that people could consume it. The difficulty with that lies, of course, in the fact uh, that people back in the 17, 1800s, especially if you're talking about Scotland and they're using Scottish sort of slang in their language, going to be kind of difficult to translate it, probably harder than translating a French text in handwriting. Um, so, I mean, I can try my hand at it. I don't know what my success rate will be. Uh, exactly, it might be a lost cause from the get-go, but we can always see what happens. Um, I think that occultists the world over should try to recover as many of these texts as possible. As time goes by, if they're not being replicated, if they're not being at the very least digitally stored, even if they're not being distributed, they're degrading over time. Uh, their legibility degrades, the likelihood that they survive degrades. You could have a house fire, you could have an earthquake, you could have a tsunami or something, wipe them off the face of the earth. If they're one of a kind or they're very, very rare, then it would be easy for them to disappear entirely. Now, we do occasionally recover these texts, and of course, remember, there's a huge core of occult literature. I've encountered scans of, uh, of occult texts, and they're written in some, like, they're written in Thai or some Cambodian dialect or something like that. They've never been translated to English. Now, we can preserve them forever, but they've never become publicly available for the Western world. Only now uh, are we at the dawn of global internet, truly speaking. I have every reason to believe that you're going to see hundreds of very old occult texts from multiple linguistic traditions enter the Western consciousness over the next half century or so. Quite a few of them. You probably get three or four every single year from now on. Uh, and it's almost an inexhaustible amount of material because, again, even some half-literate individual might have taken down scribbled notes, compiled them into a folio of sorts, and stored them. It may still be extant in somebody's basement in France. Um, the Petit Albert, the Book of Appen, all of these different texts are infinitely rewarding to read. They're very interesting, uh, but some of these texts are extremely rare. Rare to the point at which they can be wiped off the face of the earth if one or two copies are degraded beyond recognition uh, by some means or another. So it behooves us to try to rediscover as many as possible, uh, edit them, release them to the world, scan them, digitize them so they can be read forever, uh, replicate them even in handwritten form if necessary whenever possible. That would be my greatest joy, to see something like that happen. There should be a concerted effort uh, worldwide to do so. If anybody has handwritten Book of Shadows sort of material, whether it's you know, modern, pre-modern, doesn't really matter, yeah, you should probably consider storing that in some uh, situation where it can't be destroyed. That's about all. Peace out.